Hey, it's JC1424 once again with another album review, and today we're going to be talking about the new 2021 album from The Offspring, and that is Let the Bad Times Roll. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about how I discovered this band, but basically my dad would listen to them growing up, along with a bunch of rap metal and new metal, metal, hard rock, post-grunge artists. This was the only punk rock band that he listened to. He wasn't even into Green Day or Rise Against like me, and uh, there were a few others like Sum 41 that I always liked, and... It just, punk wasn't really what his thing growing up, and somehow this was one that he actually uh, paid a lot of attention to with Rise and Fall, Rage and Grace in 2008, and he had their greatest hits album, so I was always hearing their hits, and then they would play them on the radio, too. But, um, I remember listening to Days Go By just once, whenever it first came out, and I remember a few songs from it. That's what I was going to say about that. It's been nine years since their last album, back in 2012. So I've been really excited for this one just because I love their sound so much, and it's good music to go on a road trip with in the spring, which next month I'm going to Austin, Texas with a friend of mine. But, track one is This Is Not Utopia. It's a classic punk way to start an album with medium tempo, standard riffs, and familiar melodies. Though Dexter's voice sounds peculiar, I guess that comes with age, maybe, but the cymbals are gorgeous, and the obvious crazy train solo is a nice touch at the end. And the subject matter is like a fuck off, this ain't the promised land, which is relevant to recent violence and injustice in this country. I can't see these pictures, I just burn into my mind. Track two is Let the Bad Times Roll, of course, the title track, and the title kind of speaks for itself, you know, given with some of the stuff that we've been going through for the past year around the world. I pick up an interesting mixture of seriousness and lightheartedness. There's that tinge of angst in the rock sound, but a Latin-esque dance pop chorus of sorts. It grew on me a little, but I still find the chorus as anticlimactic as something like Look What You Made Me Do by Taylor Swift in like 2017. No need to ask and no need to care. The third song on this album is Behind Your Walls, and I have to ask, why does he sound like Mark the Hippopotamus from Wink 1982? You know what I'm saying. But I find a very strong emotional connection to this one. The topic at hand is struggling to communicate with someone that's suffering. It's a somber rock song with excellent movements and drums that carry them so well. Song number four is Army of One. And I gotta say, what a strange combo of police truck by the dead Kennedys as far as like how this guitar and drum shit sounds at the beginning. And then like once you get to like these vocal melodies and shit, it's na na hey hey kiss some goodbye by steam. It's definitely pessimistic, but saying it is what it is at the same time, like uh, being a lone wolf in society. Maybe the fastest song on the album yet, but not all that fast. Just another good one with more of the iconic background vocals, in my opinion. The fifth song on this album is Breaking These Bones. Ignoring the fact that this is just a carbon copy of Can't Repeat, and that I'm a simp for their sound in general, this is a perfectly kick-ass song start to finish. It comes as an acceptance of, of grief and puts that in perspective as this routine that you have to get through when you're not feeling well. The opening intensity is reminiscent of ACDC with the guitar chords and even the solo as well. I'd be lying if I said that track six, Coming For You, was anything other than a generic hard rock fight song with some clapping in there. With that being said, this was released in 2015, so I'm perplexed to see it here. But I think it might have had something to do with the fact that this was originally recorded with uh, Greg K. but I've heard about it and read about it online. I'll admit it still fits the album, and I have lots of fun with it. It's just, I think it sounded better whenever he was in that recording. I think they might have had to re record a lot of stuff um, that might have already been ready for this album just because of that. Now, Dexter mentions Donkey Kong, but I'm imagining bullfighting the whole time, to be honest. Track 7 is We Never Have Sex Anymore, and undeniably this has got to be my favorite song on the album. It was a secret second single. I don't know why they hid this. They didn't have like a lyric video or visualizer on their actual channel. I had to look it up to find it. 
It's unique and goofy, and this is exactly what usually pops off with the offspring as far as rock radio and pop radio it used to be as well. It's a, a bopping Latin jazz, hate sex whiner. I think there's an oboe, a trumpet in there going through the verses, and then a remarkably fit mute into the trumpet's bell for the guitar solo, or maybe more of a duet between the muted trumpet and the guitar. And it's this oddly satisfying combination that I can't say I've ever heard before. And it's gotta be one of my favorite songs of the year as well. I'm amused because he wants that spark back in his love life. So he's up for hormonal bickering at this point. I guess like 15, 20 years into a relationship. <laughs> Constantly used to have a ball. Track eight is in the Hall of the Mountain King, and I always just consider this Halloween music, to be honest. You know, it doesn't make or break the album in any way. Although they cut it short, and I wish they had gone through all the movements instead of just like chopping it down to just one minute. Um, I think the whole thing is usually like two minutes and forty seconds or something. Track 9 is The Opioid Diaries, and from here on out in the album, things get a lot more dynamic. The riffs and guitar tones are badass in this song. The varying tempos are as fun as always, but the drums add in the suspense and action to make this a real firework. But, uh, kids, don't do drugs. This message kind of works in their favor, because I, I guess they just have the right tone in the music to make sense. It's a good lyrics, although I don't know who Sean is. The 10th track on this album is Hassan Chop. All that really fast shit is here at the very end of the album. While the bass has played a significant role in the second half, it is just gnarly on this song, and I have to give it notice. I start to detect a link between The Offspring and actually System of a Down with the song's nutty verses, the riffs, and the whispers. But it uses all that to address our battles for righteousness and what we perceive as good and evil. The final song on the album is track 11, Gone Away, a relaxing version that we always wanted. Just Dexter's voice, a piano, and some violin, I guess. The reverb is fine and everything, but it sucks he didn't ever take it up an octave in a chorus. And that was something that I really admired about the original like 25 years ago, was that it was like a medium low to medium high vocal tone in the verses. You get up to the chorus and it's just full of angst and energy in that sense. I feel this ballad has pros and cons to the Five Finger Death Punch cover from 2017 as far as less going on, but not portraying all the agony because this just doesn't have enough just by a bit. And then Five Finger Death Punch was a little bit too much. And it's just, I can't find that medium of exactly what I like. And I feel like for the most part, it's just the vocals, like I said. And then this uh, just kind of smoothly leads into track 12, Lullaby, which is a solemn but ambient guitar duet outro of sorts, returning to a distorted edition of the Let the Bad Times Roll album theme. Well, thanks for watching this uh, Offspring album review of mine, my final score of their new 2021 album, Let the Bad Times Roll is a better than Green Day's last album, percent. But for all you people that that's not good enough for as an answer, uh, like an 88%, a uh, solid B. Not a B plus or B minus, but um, better than the last Green Day album, that's for sure. I, I, like, come on, guys. I know a lot of people are disappointed because they expect so much more in a critical sense. Um, like, some of this might sound like rehashed or just generic in their own sound, and... Then also, they didn't like the lead single, and that one took a while to grow on me, but I'm still disappointed with, of course. But I just love the Offspring sound overall. And um, I think I prefer their sound overall compared to most pop-punk bands or punk bands these days. Maybe not punk bands, but definitely pop-punk bands. These bands sound like pop-punk. I guess they just screw around. I like recording my album reviews and my music content outside right now, just because I'm waiting for my apartment to come back to being available. But uh, yeah... Thanks for listening to me talk about my opinion on this new album and talk about the facts behind it. Um, my favorite song is still got to be We Never Have Sex Anymore. And then a close second might be The Opioid Diaries, if not Behind Your Walls. And then Breaking These Bones is awesome, too. And those might be like the four that I'll definitely keep. I don't know if I even want to keep Let the Bad Times Roll anymore, to be quite frank. But see you next time. That's that. And album review over. Oh, yeah. Can't be something afraid